From time to time, you may find that you need to enter a listing that you've had before that was either terminated or maybe it expired, and now you're going to be entering that listing into the MLS again. Rather than having to enter that listing from scratch, you can simply locate your old listing number and you can copy that listing and make this task a lot simpler for yourself. So what we'll do is we'll start here in the My Listings widget and we can select My Off-Market Listings. Um, another place you can find those would be in the My Matrix and then simply click on My Listings and then you would select My Off-Market Listings from the drop-down. What you'll find is that your expired and terminated listings are always going to be at the bottom of your list. So depending on how many listings that you are viewing per page, you may have to just scroll to your last page. Here we can click on the number six and that's going to take us to our very last page. And we see here that we have some terminated and expired listings. What we'll want to do is just uh, left click and highlight that listing number. Then we're going to select the right click and go to copy. And then I am going to move to the top of my screen and look for that input on the menu. And from here, I'm going to click on Add New. We want to make sure we select the correct listing form. So I'm going to select Residential. And rather than filling from real estate tax like I normally would if I was entering a new listing, this time I'm going to select Fill from Cross Property. In the MLS number, we will left click and then right click and select Paste. I'm going to click outside the box, which will highlight the Fill Form button. And we'll click there. And now we're just going to click Active and click Submit Listing. But we are not done yet. There's going to be some information that needs to be updated. Now, you may find if it's a much older listing that you have a lot more of these exclamation points and that's going to draw your attention to those fields that need to be updated. So we'll start here with General. And we're going to enter our new list price. And we'll just say 800000 There we go. And then uh, the bedrooms, of course. And then the compensation tab. You'll need to enter the new compensation. These things don't carry over. So we'll just go ahead and enter the compensation for each one of these fields. We'll ensure that uh, we still have the same type of contract. And speaking of which, we're going to ensure that all of this listing information is still correct. And we're also going to be really tuned into whether or not any of the rules and regulations or have changed. If there are any new rules and regulations or maybe some changes to some rules and regulations that might have an impact on uh, how I'm entering this listing information because I want to make sure that I am not going to get a warning or a violation. So now we're just going to click on over here to the listing office agent. I'll need to enter my new list date. We can click on the calendar icon to do that. And we'll just select today's date and OK. And again, we're, we have to enter that expiration date. And then we'll select OK. And now we can click Submit Listing again. Now, another thing you'll notice, even though it's not lit up, is we'll want to go to that Remarks because it's never going to pull over the property information or the confidential remarks. But I can take care of that pretty easily. I can go up here to My Matrix. I can right-click and select Open in a new tab. Uh, you can't see it. It's up here outside of the screen area, but it is opening matrix in a new tab for me. Now I can right click in my speed bar and paste that MLS ID number and search. I can click on my MLS ID number here 
and I can go to my property information field and I can just highlight all of that information, right click, select copy, then go back to my listing, come in here to the property information and paste. Now again, we're gonna be sure uh, that nothing has changed. Once I'm all done with that, I can go back to that listing again. Now, again, assuming that nothing has changed with regard to the confidential remarks, I can copy and paste those into my new listing as well. Now, some things may have changed, so we always want to be uh, really, really careful with that. So now that we're all done, we've checked everything, we know that we're good to go, we're going to click on Submit Listing once again. And you'll see here that we got our new listing number. And now it's time to add the photos. Now, you have to be careful with this. If you have changed offices and you're not with the same broker, uh, you may not own those photos, so you should not do this. Uh, but if you're with the same broker, then you can add the photos from the previous listing photos. Now this is where you find it might be a good idea to have written that MLS ID number down because now that we've copied and pasted other information, we're no longer going to be able to just do that uh, right click. Uh, so I actually went back and grabbed that number so I would be able to do that for demonstration purposes, but uh, you would want to have written it down. So now we can click on Import Photos, and it's going to pull those listing photos right into the listing for us. And there are several photos there, so it's going to take just a moment. And once I have a chance to review all the photos and make sure that not a lot has changed, then I can click Certify and Save. And again, you want to be really sure that that you own the rights to the photos in order to do that. Of course, you would want to go ahead and add any supplements that you may need to add. And of course, you can set your showing information as well. All right, so now if we need to add any supplements, we can do that. Uh, we can continue editing or we can set up our showing instructions. Uh, but that's it, folks. That's just how easy it is to copy a listing over from an old listing. Mm -hmm.